In this video, we'll be going through section 1.2, which is all about solving quadratic equations. When we uh, are faced with a quadratic equation, there are a handful of different ways we can try to solve. Um, one way is we can try to factor. Uh, we can use what's called the square root method. We can complete the square. Or we can use the quadratic formula. Now, any of these last three methods will always work. No matter what the quadratic uh, equation we are faced with, these uh, three methods always work. And factoring may or may not work. Uh, may or may not that work to solve. The, the, the point being, though, that is that factoring is usually the quickest of the the methods. So I always try to factor first, and if the equation can be factored, I proceed. If not, then I can choose one of these three other methods. And again, it doesn't matter which of these three I choose. They will all work. So let's go through an example uh, that looks at each of these different methods. Now let's look at a couple different examples here. 2x squared plus 5x equals 3. Now we didn't say yet precisely what a quadratic equation is. Well, a quadratic equation is uh, an equation, so it has an equal sign. And then the variable is going to be getting squared. So this tells us that we have uh, a quadratic equation. Um, it's an equation where the variable is getting squared. So to solve a quadratic equation, Typically, we want to set this equal to 0 first. So 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to try to factor this into two binomials. So 2x times x gives me 2x squared. And then um, we look at the last term here. Um, and we think about what are the factors of negative 3. Well, um, if I plug in a plus 3 here and a negative 1 here, um, if we multiply this out by distributing, we're going to end up getting the exact same uh, equation that we started with. Now, at this point, we use what's called the zero product property, which tells us um, when we have an equation that is equal to zero, either this factor or this factor must be equal to zero. So what we do is we take each of those factors, we set them equal to zero, and then we solve each of these little equations. So 2x equals 1, x equals 1 half, or x is going to equal negative 3. So those are the two solutions um, by using the factoring method. Um, typically, um, in a quadratic equation, we will get two solutions. In general, whatever the highest exponent of an equation is, that'll tell us the greatest number of possible solutions. So when we're solving a quadratic equation, we may get two solutions. We may only get one solution. We may get zero solutions, but we can never get three solutions. Two is the greatest number of solutions to a quadratic equation. All right, the square root method, um, if we have something in this form where the left-hand side is a perfect square and the right-hand side is a perfect square, what we can do is we can take the square root of both sides and that will remove uh, the, s s the squared exponent, or the 2, and this will give us just x minus 3. Um, and then on the right-hand side, when we take the square root of 25, well, we want to write this as plus or minus 5 here. Um, so what we end up with is x minus 3 is equal to positive 5, x minus 3 is equal to negative 5, and then just solve for x. We're going to get x equals 8, 
x equals negative 2. So those are the two solutions to this equation. Now the square root method probably uh, is the least useful of the methods that we'll see here in this video. Um, it's not uh, extremely com uh, it's not extremely common where you would have a perfect square equal to a perfect square. Um, when we do, we can just take the square root of both sides, which is a nice little trick, but um, not the most common method for solving uh, quadratic equations. So let's look at our third method here, completing the square. Um, now in this example, we have x squared plus 10x plus 8 equals 0. So this quadratic is already equal to 0. What I'm going to show is what happens when we try to factor this. Well, the leading term is x squared, so I know x times x will get us x squared. Then we want to think, what are factors of 8 that will add up to 10? And the factors of 8 we could try are, I don't know, 8 and 1. But if we multiply that out, we're not going to get a 10x in the middle. We could try x plus 2, x plus 4. That doesn't work either. Um, 8 and 1 and 2 and 4 are the only factors of 8. Um, so since neither of these work, we cannot factor here. So we need a different method. Um, so what we'll try here is completing the square. Um, so to complete the square, what we do is take the original equation and in general, what we have here is ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we do is we move the c term to the opposite side of the equation. So we'll write this as x squared plus 10x equal to negative 8. And we've already seen, uh, we've already completed the square a little bit in this class when we're talking about circles, equations of circles, and writing circles in standard form. So what we do is we look at the b term here, which is 10, and we say, what is half of 10? And then we square that. So 10 divided by 2 squared. Now what we did on the left-hand side is we added 10 divided by 2 squared. So I'm going to add that also to the right-hand side to keep the equation balanced. Working this out, x squared plus 10x 10 divided by 2 is 5, 5 squared is 25, so plus 25 here. On the right-hand side, we're going to have negative 8 plus 25. Now, the whole reason we complete the square is because this trinomial on the left-hand side can be factored as a perfect square. So x plus 5 equals x plus 5, and then we get 17 on the right-hand side. So we could write this as x plus 5 squared equals 17. So at this point, it's much like the previous example where we took the square root of both sides. So square root method here. We're going to end up with x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 17. So what we do is split this up into two equations. Uh, x plus 5 equals square root 17 x plus 5 equals negative square root 17. And then we just solve each of these separately. So x plus 5 equals square root of 17. Subtract 5 from both sides. We get um, square root 17 minus 5. And then in the second equation, we get x equals negative square root 17 minus 5. So these are our two solutions. Uh, so we're going to say x is equal to, and typically how we write this is 5 or negative 5 plus square root 17 or negative 5 minus square root 17. We could also write this combined as x equals negative 5 plus or minus square root 17. This is probably the most common way that we'll see this solution. So before we move on here, um, well, while this original equation was not a perfect square on both sides, what we did was by completing the square, we turned this into a perfect square on both sides so that we can take the square root of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now, what I mentioned earlier, 
um, when we were talking about the three methods that we could use, um, I said that we could. these will always work well. The square root method kind of has an asterisk here because using the completing the square method, we, um, we go through the square root method to get to our final answer. So um, maybe this is not 100% accurate here, um, so I just want to clarify that earlier statement. When we complete the square, we complete the square and then that gets us to the square root method to uh, allow us to solve the quadratic equation. Alright, now the final uh, method for solving a quadratic is the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is when we have a quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. So let's look at a proof of uh, the quadratic formula. Where does this come from? So it actually comes from completing the square. So we're just going to take the original equation, or um, the general equation, ax squared plus bx, and I'm going to subtract the c to the right-hand side. And now we're ultimately trying to solve 4x. So what I want to do is I want to get a leading term here that is just x squared. So I'm going to divide each term by a. We get x squared plus um, b over a times x equals negative c over a. Now at this point, this is where we complete the square. So remember, to complete the square, what we do is we take half of this middle term and then we square that. So half of that is going to be b over 2a, then we square that. So I'm going to add that to both sides, b over 2a squared. And then on the left-hand side, we're going to be able to factor that. This is going to factor into x plus b over 2a squared equals negative c over a plus b squared over... 2a times 2a is 4a squared here. So on the right-hand side, we want to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction, the top and bottom, by 4a. So 4a over 4a. We're going to get negative 4ac over 4a squared. And because the denominator in that second fraction is the exact same, I'm just going to write it like this, plus b squared. And then on the left, we still have x plus b over 2a squared. Now, we're ultimately trying to get x all by itself, so we're going to apply or take the square root of both sides. So on the left, we get x plus b over 2a is equal to, well, the square root of um, nothing, we're not going to take the square root of anything uh, in the numerator, but in the denominator we can take the square root of 4a squared, that's just 2a times 2a. And then in the numerator, I'm going to reverse these and write this as b squared minus 4ac. So I think things are starting to look a little bit uh, like the original quadratic formula that we want. Um, also, one thing, when we take the square root of both sides, we need to apply the plus or minus. So the last step is to subtract b over 2a from each side. And what that is going to leave us with is x on the left-hand side. We're going to have negative b over 2a plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac that is also over 2a. Now because um, this is coming from here, so because uh, the denominators are the same, we could write this as a single fraction. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that gets us back to what we started with. 
So let's look at an example of how we can use the quadratic formula. And I'm actually going to um, solve the same equation that we solved when we completed the square. So what we want to do is uh, identify what the a, b, and c values are. So a is just this leading term. 1 for a, we get a b value of negative 10 and a c value of 8. So once again, then quadratic formula negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we just plug everything in. So we're going to have x is equal to negative b, so negative of negative 10, plus or minus square root b squared, so negative 10 squared minus 4a times c all over 2 times a. And then from here, it's just an exercise in simplification. x is equal to positive 10 plus or minus square root. Negative 10 squared is 100. Negative 4 times 1 times 8 is negative 32 all over uh, 2. Simplifying this radical, which is square root of 68. Well, square root of 68, we can write that as 4 times 17, which is 4 is a perfect square, so 2 square root 17. So we get x equals 10 plus or minus 2 square root 17 all over 2. And then from here, uh, we want to see if we can factor anything out. And it looks like between the 10 and the 2, we can factor 2 out of there. So x is equal to 2 times 5 plus or minus square root 17 all over 2. 2 is cancel and we get an x value of 5 plus or minus square root 17. And if you look back to the example of uh, when we completed the square, you'll see that this is the exact same solution.